Hey, the pilots are gone. We need you to put down your pretzel and almonds and get up in the cockpit and land this airliner safely and save the day. Can you do it? Well, by the end of this video, not only are you gonna be able to do it, you're gonna be able to do it with style, and most importantly, sound cool on the radio. Here we go. Hey BJ Clean team, it's Ryan. Welcome to my channel. This channel is all things aviation and I use my experience as a former F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot, and current commercial pilot who's flown both Boeing and Airbus aircraft to break down awesome aviation videos and stories. And you can send me those on my Instagram at BJ Clean. This one is going to be one that if you stay to the end, you're going to be able to tell your friends that, hey, don't worry, emergency situation happens. I'll be able to land any airliner, no big deal. But keep in mind guys, this is for entertainment purposes only, this is not any type of official instruction. And before we get going, if you would, just dominate that like button for me, and hey, maybe even subscribe. Every time you like and subscribe a pilot somewhere, gets their wings. This video is gonna be broken down from the perspective of me talking you down as if you just went into a cockpit and now you're gonna put on a headset and you're gonna talk to air traffic control, which is gonna be me in this case. So don't worry, I'll be there for you if you need me. And at the end of the day, this is an A220. So there's so many different airliners out there, but I think it's really cool that we're gonna be talking about it through the lens of an A220, which is the newest Airbus airliner. It's the most advanced airliner out there and it's just gonna give you some great perspectives on how that plane operates so that part will be cool but the coolest part is gonna be telling your friends that hey I'll be able to land this airliner if anything happens no worries let's dive in so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is grab a headset. There'll be headsets around the cockpit of the jet. More than likely, they'll be kind of hanging up to the right-hand side of the first officer's seat, and that's the seat on the right-hand side. So you wanna make sure that thing's plugged in. You're gonna put it on, and then you're gonna make sure that microphone thing is right in front of your mouth. Now the thing here is you're gonna hear all types of different chatter, all types of things that are gonna sound like foreign languages. The radio chatter can be very weird, and it can throw you off. At the end of the the day you don't need to worry about any of that because if you're an emergency aircraft like you're gonna be in this situation you get precedent over everyone else and they'll essentially make sure that no one else is disrupting you but at first when you put it on and they don't really know what's going on it's gonna be really busy but again just just remember that it's all good take a deep breath get that headset on and sit down in the seat on the right hand side all right, now getting familiar with the cockpit, there's a stick over there on the right. There is a push to talk switch on that, but don't hit it because you might bump off the autopilot. Instead, to talk, there's PTT switches around the cockpit. And I'll talk more about these in a second, but you just push the PTT, hold it down while you're saying something in order to talk. You can use your thumb or forefinger on that, you know, whatever's more comfortable for you. Then we're gonna step up here to where this radio is actually controlled. You hit that one slash two, it changes it to VHF two, and 121.5 should be sitting in there ready for you. But if not, hit that little button to the left side of it and it'll put that box around it. But if it's green, that means it's in use. Now I'm gonna tell you how to actually use that radio. So go behind that little module that we were just looking at, hit VHF two, and that corresponds with the two that's up there on the radio. Right now one's selected, now two's selected, and now I'm changing the volume of that radio too. And that's where you're gonna hear that frequency, that's the 121.5. Push the PTT to talk whenever you wanna talk. And that 121.5 is called guard. And it's a frequency that a lot of people will use for emergency situations. And then there's that box that's up in front of that module where you just change the radio. You'll get talked through that and I would basically talk to you during your approach and I would say, okay, I want you to, to hit a button, a specific button, it looks like this, it says, DEP for departures, for example. I want you to hit that, and then I want you to select an ILS to runway 36, is what I would tell you. And I would walk you through it and show you exactly what to do. So I'm not gonna get too in depth into that, but just think of that thing as like the keyboard on your laptop. It's nothing to be intimidated about. That's where you basically tell the jet what approach you wanna fly and what runway you wanna land at. There's the throttles up there, so don't bump those. Those should be on auto throttles as well, and I'll show you all that here in a second. Here's just a broad overview of the cockpit. Really nice, clean cockpit with some great screens. Again, don't bump the stick because that would turn the autopilot off and things could get bad. This is just a display that's gonna show you your airspeed and altitude. And then there's a moving map to the left-hand side of that. These are the things you don't really need to worry about, just some gee whiz stuff that's kinda of cool to look at. All right, now this is where we get into the important stuff. I just hit the AP and the AT buttons. 
So the AP and the AT buttons are some of the most important buttons in the cockpit. And that green light above them, it means they're engaged. AP is for autopilot, AT is for auto throttle. So with both of those things on, the jet's essentially going to be flying itself with a few other things that we're gonna do in a second. But now that you have a view of that upfront control, this is really where you're gonna do most of your work to get this thing landed safely, all right? So if I start on the left-hand side, it says IA for indicated airspeed. And the inner part of that knob is flipped over to the right. That's the key right there, guys, is make sure the inner part of that far left knob is flipped over to the right that says MAN, which is manual. That means you can control the speed. Otherwise, it's gonna be very confusing. So definitely make sure you've got that inner knob flipped over to manual. Can't stress that enough. Then the next window over says HDG, heading. And then you can see the HDG button has a green light above it. That's what you want to have. You wanna have the green light above the HDG button. That means you can change the heading of the aircraft with that knob that spins below the HDG symbol there. Then stepping over even further to the right hand side of my hand right now, you see 3000 and that's the altitude that you've commanded the aircraft to go to. Here in a second, we're gonna bump up that altitude because most likely you're gonna be at a higher altitude when you step into this cockpit and you're ready to save the day. Remember, after all this, we're gonna have to plan your victory speech as well. But before we get to that, let's keep going so you can get this airliner landed safely. All right, now I'm spinning the speed knob up to 250. That's most likely what I would tell you to do. I'd say, hey, make sure the speed knob's set to 250, your heading should be 283, and you're at 15,000 feet. Make sure that's up in the windows. Always think airspeed, heading, altitude throughout this whole thing. Then I'm gonna say, I want you to slow to 200 knots. So you're gonna spin that to 200. I want you to turn to heading 180. Spin in the 180. Perfect, nicely done, look at you champ. All right, then you're gonna go and change your altitude. So it depends on where you're flying. Most likely, you're gonna be able to descend to somewhere around 5,000. Now, I want you to hear what happens before we get to the altitude part on what will happen if you bumped off the auto throttle. So in a second, I'm gonna hit play and you're gonna hear, this is what happens if you bump off auto throttle. So you know you need to hit that AT button again. And then I'm gonna do it with the autopilot as well. Auto throttle. Auto throttle. The auto throttle is that oral warning that's like auto throttle, auto throttle. See, I could be the auto throttle guy. And then the AP is gonna be more of like a buzzer type sound. But I want you to know these two things. The, the way to fix them is super easy. You just hit the button again. So if you were to bump the stick or something, you're gonna hit this button. There's that ringing for the autopilot. But you just hit auto, auto throttle, autopilot to turn them back on, no big deal. All right, back to the altitude. So let's say you get cleared down to 5,000 feet. You hit FLC, and that's what actually makes the aircraft start to descend. If you hit ALT, like is illuminated now, that will hold the altitude that you have. So in this scenario, let's fast forward and let's say it descended all the way from 15 to 5,000. It's gonna light up ALT all on its own, so you're not gonna need to do anything. The key there is the altitude you want and then hitting FLC. Now I'm gonna say slow down to 180 knots, I want you to turn to a heading of 090, and I want you to just descend to 3,000 feet. Boom, FLC, nice job, crushing it, down to 3,000 feet. This is setting you up for an approach. At this point, I'm gonna say, I want you to grab the slat flap handle, and I want you to put it to two. All right, when you do that, that'll help prepare the jet for landing. And you can move it eventually to spot three and spot four, but I would walk you through exactly when to do that. All you need to know is where this flap switch is, okay? Let's go back to two for now, uh, and that'll, that's, that'll be where we fly around for now. Then I'm gonna say descend to 2,000 feet and hit flight level change. Boom, flight level change 2,000. I want you to turn to heading 360. Now I'm gonna slow you to your approach speed. Your approach speed is most likely gonna be around 140 to 145 knots. Now you're looking pretty, all right? You've got your speed set, you've got heading mode, and then the last thing you're gonna do is this. The last thing you're gonna do is hit that approach button, all right? Now that's your golden ticket once you're set up, and I'll get you lined up perfectly, don't worry about it. All good air traffic controllers are not gonna have any problem whatsoever lining you up, uh, but in this case, it's me. I'm helping you out, we're a team, remember that. 
So you're gonna get lined up and then you're gonna hit APPR, which is approach. That's essentially all the systems in the jet saying, okay, I'm gonna look for whatever you typed into that little box down there, which we went through earlier and you're all set up already. I'm gonna look for whatever you have in there and I'm gonna look for that certain signal, which I'm gonna grab and then align myself with the runway and the descent point and it's gonna bring you to a perfect landing. So pretty sweet that you're already at this point and we're only you know a few minutes in to this. You're already crushing it. Wow, I'm impressed. All right, let's keep going. So you just hit the approach button. Let's go from there. You're looking pretty. Your airspeed's good, your heading's good, and your altitude is great. You're on your way to create, to making a successful approach. Then I'm gonna say, I want you to put the gear handle down. All right, so that's what you're gonna do. And then with the switch down here, that is the auto brake switch. You can see there's an RTO setting, an off, a low, a medium, and a high. In this scenario right here, I was getting ready for takeoff, so I put it to RTO. You, coming in for a landing, you're gonna put it at medium, and that's just the strength that the brakes are gonna take you to a stop. So I want you to set that to medium in the A220. And what that'll do is it'll automatically get you to slow down. So now that you've got the auto brake set, this thing's gonna slow down on its own after you land. A lot of this other stuff is just gonna be gee whiz, except for the rudder pedals. So you're gonna pop out this little knob in between the rudder pedals, and you're gonna spin those rudders, uh, rudder pedals back to where you can reach them. And the top of them are brakes. But you're not gonna be able to need to use the brakes until you're like 10 miles an hour or so because the auto brakes are set. This is just some G West stuff for you to look at. This is your big moving map that you might see throughout this entire process. It's a really user-friendly setup. Highly, highly happy with how this thing works. When you get the jet actually stopped, then I'm gonna tell you, hey, reach up and turn the APU to start and hold it there for three seconds. All right, so now that you've turned the APU to on, what you'll see is APU start in white and then eventually it'll turn to APU on once that gets fired up. The reason why I want you to get that APU cranked up and running is because here in a minute, once we get the aircraft stopped and the parking brake set, I'm gonna have you turn off one of the engines. And that'll be something that I'll walk you through I'll tell you exactly what to do so you don't even need to worry about it. The nice thing about getting a talk down from an airliner is that you just need to do one little thing after another. It's not like you have to memorize everything at first, all right? So now you've got that APU running and now you're ready to come in for a landing. Awesome, so you've got your gear down. You see the three green for your gear. This is another description of the aircraft that shows up that shows you the doors, which doors are open. So let's say you've got everything set up. You come in for the landing. You've gotten all the different steps set. You're ready to go. You got the auto brakes on medium and you are ready to land this beast. The nice thing is with this A220, it's gonna be set up on what's called an ILS and that's just a fancy way of saying there's a signal that's gonna guide you perfectly down onto the runway. The beautiful thing is this thing is going to land itself without any other steps. So you're sitting pretty, you're looking good. Now all you gotta do is start thinking about your victory speech. Big picture though, when you get this thing on the ground, when you get that touchdown from the autopilot, what you're gonna do eventually, after you get down to like five or so knots, which is just like a speed that you would see someone walking past, you're just gonna hit the top of those rudder pedals, bring yourself to a perfect stop, and then there is a parking brake on the left hand side that I'll walk you through and show you how to get to that bad boy. So now you've made the perfect landing, you've got the parking brake on, then I'm gonna talk you through shutting down one of the engines. It'll be the left engine you'll shut down. The switch is really easy to find, it's right behind the throttles. I'll walk you through all that, and then emergency personnel are gonna show up. So. Nicely done. Let's continue playing this video. This is something I'll show you that's a really cool feature of the A220. I can essentially click on a point out in front of me, and this might be something that I have you do as well, but I might click on a point out in front of me and then I'll hit execute, which will take me to that point. Let's watch and see how that's done. And then you either hit execute or cancel. So pretty user friendly as far as navigation goes. And then there's this little knob here on the bottom which you can change the range of what you're seeing on your moving map. So that can be helpful as well if I'm telling you to look for a certain point out in front of you, like in that case, trucking. So there you go guys, you're set up to execute a perfect airliner landing and tell all your friends now that you can land an airliner in an emergency. Some philosophy behind emergencies and aircraft, this is something that I really started to develop when I was in the F-15E, the first fighter jet that I'd flown. And what I realized is in emergencies, there are people that are kind of reacting and they're you know getting whipped around like they're on the edge of a whip. 
And then there's the calm, cool, and collected people who make things happen and get things back to harmony. So I want you to be that second type of person. I mean, think of a first responder showing up to a situation. They're gonna take decisive action, but then they're gonna be that person who's calm, cool, and collected to get everything back to a state where everyone can relax again. And so what I noticed in the F-15E was I would show up to help a wingman who was having like a gear problem. And I remember a specific scenario where there was a chance this person was gonna have to eject because one of their gear wouldn't come down. I was like, hey, you know, I can kind of be like kind of like flustered kind of like they were because for good reason you know they're preparing for a really stressful situation or I could be that calm cool as a cucumber collected pilot and help them safely get this thing on the ground and you're more used to any to everyone else if you're able to just chill Take a deep breath, even though you're in a stressful situation, and listen to instructions. So in that situation with the F-15E, I knew I was the calm, cool, and collected one for the most part, and so I was the one who decided to go through the checklist and read the steps of that checklist to the other pilot so they could focus on flying and focus on some other things they needed to do as far as navigation and things like that. And it's important to remember, in a situation like this, you would have mutual support. So the biggest thing is getting communications with air traffic control. I've worked with a lot of air traffic control controllers and they are super sharp people so you would absolutely have someone on your side to help you. Now the million dollar question is has this ever happened before in an airliner and the answer is no, it has not. There has not been a talk down of a major airliner that's ever been recorded that I know of, but it's happened in smaller planes. And also there's been situations where maybe one pilot would become incapacitated on an airliner and they would bring up someone who has flight experience from the back to just help back up the captain or the first officer and maybe read some of those checklists to them or things like that. So now you've got a baseline understanding of what it takes to land one of these airliners. So. I'll see you on the radio, hopefully not for landing an airliner. So most importantly, now you can tell all your friends that you're flying with that, hey, anything happens, no worries. I can step up and help take care of business. <laughs> now all you gotta do is think about that victory speech of yours. Thanks for being here. If you wouldn't mind before you go, just dominate that like button and hey, maybe even subscribe most of all. Have a great day.